My name is Sunil Akole. I grew up in the city of Akola in the Vidarbha region of Maharashtra. I went to Pune for my engineering education and then after working in Mumbai for two years, I came to the US in 1991. I'm here to share my scleroderma journey, including early symptoms, diagnosis, my mindset and the treatments. Until 2007, when I was 39 years old, I was a perfectly healthy and normal person living an active lifestyle. In 2007, I was on a work trip to Gurgaon. While staying in Hotel Trident, one night I ordered an extra spicy meal. While my taste buds really enjoyed it, in the middle of the night, I woke up to a violent 30 minutes long episode of coughing and throwing up thick white liquid with a sour taste in the mouth. Later I learned that that was my first encounter with acid reflux. Upon returning, it started happening regularly. So I saw a GI doctor who put me on anti-reflux medication. The doctor thought that the reflux was due to my frequent travel to Asia and the related stress. With no relief, in 2008, I started coughing. So I saw a pulmonologist, did the CT scan. Per the CT scan report, I had a scarring and inflammation on the lungs with ILD, interstitial lung disease, that can happen due to scleroderma. But the doctor never called me back for follow-up and to alert about the seriousness of this condition. Neither did I call the doctor as I didn't bother to understand the report well. Two lessons learned here. Read and understand every report thoroughly. Ask questions. Even if you are like me with no medical background, seek help from someone who can or call the doctor office or ask related questions in the next appointment. And second lesson was always follow up with doctor to make sure you have a follow up appointment until the doctor says that you don't need to see him again. If I was diagnosed at that time, I could have been in a much different situation and my scleroderma would have been manageable in the early stages. As my reflux was worsening, I eliminated everything that could cause acid reflux. So no caffeine, tomatoes, onions, spices, chocolates, I started eating less because I was afraid of the reflux. Lost 20 pounds in three years. Life was testing my ability to control and discipline myself. Slowly, external features started changing, but very slowly for me or my family to notice. Like I had a tight face, loss of fat on cheeks, around the mouth, etc. I thought that this was due to the weight loss. Next two years, I saw Ayurvedic and homeopathic doctors in India, did several tests in the US like endoscopy, colonoscopy, but there was no diagnosis, no improvements. The symptoms were getting worse. Despite all the reflux related precautions, I would cough all day. Sometimes severe violent coughing after the dinner as my breathing was also getting affected. Through all this, I was trying to live a normal life, going to the work every day just that my physical abilities were reducing. In 2010, I was visiting my family in Pune. After looking at me, my dad wanted me to see his doctor to make sure everything was okay. Without expecting much, I agreed to him because I wanted him to have a peace of mind and not worry too much about me. So we went to see his personal doctor who then asked me to see a GI doctor in Pune. The GI doctor looked at all my reports and then he had me do a barium swallow x-ray test. Upon looking at the barium swallow x-ray reports, he said he was 95% sure that I had a scleroderma because he saw that my esophagus was affected. He also asked me to see a pulmonary doctor and a rheumatologist. The pulmonary doctor did a breathing test and said that I probably had six months to 24 months of life ahead of me. This was all shocking. I had never heard of words scleroderma before, but upon Googling, it was clear I had most of the scleroderma symptoms. Me being optimistic, I did not pay much attention to the six months to 24 months prognosis. There was no point thinking, you know, why me, why now, why scleroderma? I could not change the past, 
But now I have to figure out a way to prolong my life one day at a time. I had a very strong desire, motivation and determination to live longer. I returned to the US, saw a local rheumatologist who referred me to a scleroderma specialist at Johns Hopkins University. But the first appointment available was after nine months. During that period, I could clearly feel that my lungs were deteriorating rapidly. My body was on the downhill. I was afraid if I could give up. Finally, upon seeing the doctor, he started me on cytoxan or cyclophosphamide chemotherapy, monthly dose for one year. After a few doses, the treatment certainly arrested the decline and I was feeling stabilized in terms of my lung function. However, my reflux saw no relief. In the night, the reflux would enter the lungs and I could not begin my day without coughing out the acid in the morning. I would take a 20-30 minute long shower, constantly bring up and cough out the acid from lungs. Only after that, I would feel like beginning my day. After about three years, in October 2015, I started pulmonary rehab at the local hospital and learned that my oxygen levels were dropping upon exertion. So I started using oxygen during the exercise. The pulmonary rehab forced me and the doctors to monitor my lung function on a weekly basis and does my oxygen requirements. It also allowed me to stay physically active even if it was with oxygen. Slowly over the next two years, my oxygen needs increased. I also started using oxygen while walking. I would carry a D3 size oxygen tank on my shoulder to walk to the car from parking lot to the office, even within office for meetings, going to the restroom, etc. Slowly, I needed 24 hour oxygen. I would have a large oxygen concentrator plugged in the wall at home with 50 foot long tubing so that I could move all over the house continue doing normal things like you know dishwashing, laundry, shower, everywhere, and then carry the tanks when going to the office or for shopping, etc. Continuing to go to office and doing things at home allowed me to stay physically and mentally active and not think too much about my condition. As much as possible, I also did not want to become a burden or be physically dependent on someone. We also continued socialization with friends as much as possible. That sometimes meant carrying 12 tanks of oxygen in the car for a 10 hour drive and back, and then arranging for tanks to be delivered at the friend's house for our you know, stay during that period. Through all this ordeal, my wife, my daughter and my son fully supported and encouraged me to keep going. They helped out in every possible way to make sure that I was comfortable. If you're going to a restaurant, they would make sure that there was something for me to eat. And if you're going on some activity that, you know, I could handle that part as well. So I could not have been through this journey without their support. And I'm extremely thankful for having them in my life. In 2017, my doctor recommended that I should begin to get evaluated for an eventual lung transplant. The evaluation required us to visit hospitals as far away as 400 miles for a period of one week at a time. I was declined by two hospitals as they perceived me to be a high risk patient due to scleroderma. It was disappointing to say the least, but one hospital accepted me. However, at the time they said it was a little too early to get listed. Finally, after a year in October, 2018, I was listed for a lung transplant and received a single lung transplant in March, 2019. The journey from this point on can be a topic for another discussion, I'll just say most of the scleroderma issues are not bothersome anymore. In closing, I would like to make three points that helped. First one, you know, stay active physically and mentally as much as you can. Number two, stay positive and motivated. I know it's easier said than done, but it does help with healing the body as well as response to the treatments. I can proudly say that at every appointment, the doctor would ask if I was feeling depressed, angry or anxious. And the answer was always firmly a no. Negative feelings will not help going forward. I would think of worst case scenarios as one of the financially responsible persons of the family, but I didn't get too much bogged down in those thoughts. And third, listen to the doctors on exercise, diet, medication and the treatment.
Thank you for allowing me to share my experience. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have.